DJI, new topic. Very short, very, very sweet. DJI, going to get banned, right? That's a given. Does anybody, is anybody not up to speed on that? You know, in December, come December, if a national security agency doesn't do an audit, and as the result of that audit, uh, state that DJI is not a threat to national security, then DJI goes on the entities list. So that's basically going to happen because nobody's going to, nobody is going to raise their hand. And they were real smart when they did this because they didn't say the the FBI must assess the, the DOD, the NSA. They didn't point to a specific agency and say, it is your job to evaluate whether DJI is a threat to national security. They said, somebody's got to do it. And that means everybody can look around and go, is it you? Is it you? It's not me. And then just mm, la 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 until the date passes. So DJI is going to go on the entities list. And that means that no new DJI products can get their FCC, FCC certification. Also, Customs is not importing DJI products for various reasons. And there are other moves to if people even talking about giving the FCC ability to revoke existing certificates. Basically, like the writings on the wall for DJI. Sorry, Americans, of which I am one. DJI is not in our future. I think in theory, I think that we will still see some importing of DJI products as long as there's market demand for it. The, the DJI drones are going to be very difficult. We st There are some companies who are re-importing them somehow and reselling them now. Whether that will still happen once they no longer have FCC certificates uh, it remains to be seen. They're very expensive. They're, they're heavily marked up. It's possible that some FPV products will fly under the radar. For example, uh, you, you probably will still be able to get bind and fly drones with DJI air units in them, I would guess, because I think those will fly under the radar since it's not a DJI product. Um, we just had several vendors get st stock of air units in the last week. I saw reports that Rotorite, Get FPV, Race Day Quads, uh, Fly High FPV all had O4s. Somehow there was a batch of them that got sent out. Um, but uh, I think that right now, I wouldn't, if I didn't already have investment in DJI Assist stuff, I wouldn't buy into DJI today because the future in the U.S. is so uncertain. So uncertain. I wouldn't feel confident that I would continue to be able to get equipment. So then the question uh, from Reed Anderson is, if DJ is getting banned, should I go walk snail? Well, uh, I would I would say that if what you want is DJI, but you can't get it, Walk snail is an acceptable substitute. Okay. Um, walk snail is pretty good. If DJI didn't exist, we would be way, we would be very impressed with walk snail. Walk snail is a hundred percent usable. It, 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 if you know how good DJI is, then the whole time you're using walk snail, you're, you're like, you know, comparison is the thief of joy. As the saying goes, you're going like, ah, oh, DJI would have gotten through that. But walk snail is pretty good. Um, if we want a DJI style digital link, Walksnail is okay. However, what, now that Walksnail has released this Protos kit with the Ascend video system, on some level, I'm like, well, how much longer does the Walksnail system have? I think it's got a while, though. Because here's the thing. Walksnail doesn't move fast. Caddx doesn't move fast. They say, oh, we're going to release this thing, and then six months, nine months, a year later, maybe they do, maybe they don't. Excuse me. They move relatively slowly. So I think I think that the current Walksnail system has some life in it yet. Um, so yeah, maybe. There are times when I just think, ah, I'm going back to analog. It's been a good run. So. All right, there you go. Um, other things that have happened. We got some super chats stacking up. Don't worry. Is everyone just going to have to switch to analog? Well, you don't have to. 
But but and by the way, I said that in my review of the Protos, and one of the commenters was like, "What about HD Zero? You're acting like HD Zero doesn't even exist." HD Zero, my stance on HD Zero, God bless him, is very clear and established. HD Zero is the absolute tip top choice for racing. I've done a lot of testing of HD Zero in my life. Um, more than you think, because I, some of it didn't make it on the channel because I work with, I work with people in the world and they do things and I hear about the things they do. And, um, like I've told this story before, I, I know a guy who runs a, a training program for his company and they work with FPV products and he decided to switch his program over to HD zero. And, uh, over the course of six months, he ran several programs. He ran several training programs. Uh, about 25 or 30 students went through his program. I'm trying to think of the numbers. And they all used HD0 and they flew in all kinds of environments. And the conclusion was this is not up to snuff. Um, long story short. Like, it's not like, my point is, it's not like I haven't given HD0 a chance Frankly, when, when this person said that he was putting his program on HD0, I was like, bro, you don't want to do that. And he was like, I think it's the way. I was like, okay, tell me how it goes. And then six months later, you know, he was like, ah, no, it was a bad choice. Penetration, range, etc. no good. So my point is, HD0, fantastic for racing. Not so good for everything else. Maybe, like, obviously you can. There are people who do. But my personal take that I put into the world and that I use for myself is for freestyle and fun flying, DJI, walk snail, analog. I'm just, yeah, 